Deuteronomy chapter 28. And a companion chapter to this would be Leviticus 26. There shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Well, how do you know Israel is not doing right today? Because they're not set high. The United Nations, the Jordans, the world, the Catholic Church have got them all Israel under their power. They have not done right. But God's not finished with them. God's not done with them. And all these, all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Imagine a blessing overtaking you. You picture a man, he, he, he's walking. And you would think like a dust storm would be following him. And he's not running. He's just walking away from the dust storm. And it overpowers him. Well, that dust storm being blessing, he's just walking down the road and it just surrounds him. By doing what God's told him to do. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of of the Lord thy God. So a quarter of this chapter, a quarter, is what happens when a man listens to God in the Old Testament. He will get blessings. He will be overpowered with blessings. Now the thing is, you can't run to the church age, and I'm not one of them people that say, whatever Paul says is signed, sealed, and delivered. But Paul was one of them Christians that did right. He obeyed God, except for a few times for all his sin. And he was persecuted. He was put in prison. John, the apostle, did right. He's the one that leaned upon the breast and heard the heartbeat of God. He did right. And he's put off on an island because of the word of God. When we got to put the division between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and you cannot say, oh, you're going to live right. You're going to do everything that God tells you to do. And my life is going to be happy. Absolutely not. There are men who have been in the ministry, have started a ministry, have started a church. They love the Lord. They do right. And they die at an early age. And there are wicked people. Man, they're just wicked. And they just live and live and live and live. And you think God forgot about them. But we're looking at the nation of Israel. And we looked at curses last night. Twelve of them. When you get into that land, you are signed, sealing your name by a man. Amen. To these twelve curses that once you get in that land, you are obligated to follow the law. You are obligated to do what God has told you to do. And you're obligated to teach your children. Once you get in that land. Now, chapter 28. A quarter of this chapter, if you do right and do what God wants you to do and expects you to do, blessed shall thou be in the city, in all the cities, blessedness. And blessed shall be in the field. So the opposite of the city is a field. And the opposite of the field is a city. With the, 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 and it's not metropolitan kind of cities that we have to, it's where all the people live and do all the business. In the field, we're all, you know, they're, they're tending to farms, fruits and vegetables. The city's a business. So your crops, your agriculture is going to be blessed. Your city of commerce, your business structure is going to be blessed. If you do right and you obey God. Again, this is not church age doctrine. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. That's children. Babies. Boys and girls. You will get children. You will be populous by doing what God told you to do. The fruit of the ground. Under the ground. Onions. Above the ground. Fruits and vegetables. Trees. The fruit of thy cattle, beef, milk, cheese, 
baby cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep, wool, sheep meat. Sheep was a, was a value of money too, it was commerce. I'll give you food, I'll give you children, I'll give you animals, and I'll give you, after the children, I'll give you the ground, I'll give you the animals, so you can provide for your children. So it's not only having children, but feeding those children. That's a blessing. And test to see if anybody was listening to these and the uh, question and answers. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. There's your shopping carriage. There's that little thing you carry walking through the store, putting stuff in. There's your shopping carriage that you wheel around in the Bible. Do you know how America is not blessed today by God? The amount of groceries and money that we spend today for a bag of groceries would have filled the whole cart 10, 15, 20 years ago. What you could fill a cart in 10, 20, 15 years ago, or when my parents were living, you can only put in one grocery bag today. Prices are getting blown out of the measure. And then when you get in that grocery cart, when you get inside that bag, it's not real food. It's not. You might buy beef, but it may not be real beef. You might buy a box of cereal, and that cereal is anything but real. Artificial flavoring, chemicals, sugars, corn syrups. Your butter is not real. Unless it's a high price butter. But there's your shopping carriage. There's going to the grocery store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall be when thou goest out. And there's no, what's he coming into? It doesn't say. What's he coming out of? It doesn't say. So anything that that Jew, if he were to obey God, once he gets into it, God's going to bless him. And whatever he comes out of, God's going to bless it. Whatever the situation is, there is no cause in verse 6. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise against thee to be smitten before thy face. Don't worry about your enemies. When the Jew is obeying the commandments, are in the law, they are right by God. Don't worry about those enemies, Gideon. You realize when, when Gideon had that 300 men that we read today as a family? Do you realize of all the men that he started with, I don't know the number is what we read today, but you realize that three, 301, you had 300, 301 would have been 1% of the entire population that he had as an army before God says ask him if they fear and then let's bring them to the water and see how they drink one percent of all those people God said all right and they didn't even lift a sword against the Midianites the Midianites killed them own selves listen they were carrying a candle and pottery on one hand they were carrying a trumpet on the other hand where was the sword <laughs> there wasn't any And Gideon was doing right by God, and what a blessing. Don't worry about your enemies if you're doing right. What about Paul's enemies? Again, I'm not putting Paul as the number one person of all the world. Man, he went and preached in one town, they stoned him. And the apostles and the disciples and the people looking at him, like, man, he's dead. And he got up. And he went right back in there. Just because you're a Christian doesn't, oh, if I do right, I'm going to live. No, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know what that verse means? Don't go run into the Old Testament. Now, we can get things out of here. I've had God bless my grocery basket in my house wonderfully. And not because of what I've done, it's just because he wants to supply the blessing, he wants the thanksgiving going back to him, but it's not what I've done. Absolutely not. They shall come out against thee one way, and shall flee before thee seven ways. They're going, bye, see you later. Here they come, boom, there they go. 
And the Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses, silos, barns, anywhere where stores food. Today you would call it, you know, these big name stores. I'm not going to give them no names. You know, you go in there and buy bulk. That's what it'd be today. And all that thou settest thy hand unto. Whatever you want to do, whatever you do as a Jew, that you obey me. If it's in the will of God that you're obeying God, God says, I'll let you do it. He shall bless thee in all, and he shall bless thee in, thy, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, David wanted to build a temple. He couldn't for the blood of the hand of the enemies. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. Now this, that is not written to any nation. Now Christians are to be holy people, but a, a Christian is an individual. The nation of Israel is a group of people, a corporate people. You, <coughs> excuse me. You cannot say, oh, my church is, is holy people. Because there are people in churches that are not saved. And there are people who are groups of religions as the Catholic. Oh, we're the holy balloon. I mean, we're the holy people. No. That's only said of the Jews. As a group of people. Now, you may have an individual Christian who's got a holy life, doing right. But the Lord establishes thee a holy people unto himself. God saying, those people, that people, them, the Jews, are my people. They are holy people. No one else. No Americans. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God. So see, to be a holy people, to be a righteous people, in the Old Testament for the Jews, they've got to keep the commandments. And there are church organizations, there are religious organizations today that will put you under the laws and will tell you to do what the Bible says in the Old Testament and you can be a holy group, we can be a holy congregation. Where we're not under the law. Again, yeah, this is Old Testament. This is not for a Christian. This is not for people on this side of the calendar called A.D. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. There is none righteous. The only righteousness that we have can get is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and that is all. And the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. So the people, the Jews, are to be a testimony to everyone around them. You are particular. You are unlike the world. And you worship that God. That can be said about the Christian. We're not to be having parts in the world. We're not to do the worldly thing. We're not to do the world's practices. We're not to do the programs. We're not to do what the world do, says to do. We are to do what the Bible says to do. It's funny how Christians will come up to you and you like we preach on the streets and oh Christ will never do that. My church never does that, but do you have bingo? Do you have in your in your uh, youth group, do you have in your vacation Bible them up there performing acts of, of changing their name and being people who they're not to be and like Hollywood? Well, they're to look at you like you're different. You're odd. And what you do is foolish. Like the Bible said, if you preach on the street, that's foolishness. Not the message, but you just screaming at people on the street. That's foolish. And to them, they think it's foolish. And to God says, I love them feet. I love the feet that take the gospel to others. And they shall be afraid of thee. So the fear of the people around them the fear of all the people who are not part of this people would be to fear them that serve God. 
If I do something to that Jew, if I entertain any nastiness or evil against that Jew, God is going to pass it to me because I've heard somewhere, cursed be that curses thee. Don't want to mess with them. And the Lord shall make thee plentous, plentous in goods. Goods. That's hardware. That's software. That's boxes. That's food. That's tools. Goods. And the fruit of thy body again. Babies. Children. And the fruit of thy cattle again. Beef. Dairy. In the fruit of thy ground, fruits and vegetables, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, give thee in the land of Israel. In that land, God said, that is your land. No matter what the United Nations say, no matter what the Catholics say, no matter what the Pentecostals say, no matter what the Baptists say, no matter what the President says, no matter what Russia says, no matter what anybody says, that land is Israel's land. And they are in their sins right now. They have sinned against God. They are out of the land that we're going to see this, the rest of this chapter. And yet God will bring them back into that land. And God will settle a throne in that land. He will not settle a president. He will settle a king of kings and lords of lords. To sit on the throne of David to reign from one piece of land called Jerusalem, called Israel. But they're not really doing right today, and God's not finished with them. So, verse 12 The Lord shall open thee his good treasure. Ooh. You imagine in verse 12 it's saying good treasure? God the Father, the creator of everything, he has good treasure. What's the good treasure? The heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season. So a good treasure from God is to get rain. Now in the time of Noah, that was not a good treasure. It would rain. Did it not rain? But it rained for 40 days and 40 nights and it didn't stop. That was a judgment. We got rain today. It's been a long time since we've had rain here in Florida like the rain we had today. And the only thing you can do is say, thank you, God. We got a thirsty garden out there, Lord. Thank you. How often does America, the Christian nation, the great Donald Trump that we have in the White House, how often does this nation, when it rains, we get the good treasure of God, do we get down and say, thank you, God? No, we complain about the rain. Oh, God, please don't make it rain Saturday. I've got a picnic, important things to do. And you need that rain for the crops. For you to be praying, oh, God, I don't want rain on this day because I have entertainment. A farmer may be saying, God, I need that rain for my crops and to bring money into this household. Give the rain unto thy land in his season. Now, it would be not a blessing if you were to get rain in the wrong time. And Israel has a climate with the, uh, the latter rain. It fits the climate of that land and not by evolution, but by God, the creator. To bless all thy work of thy hand. Crops. Building. Armory, weaponry of war. The craftsmen of your hand, the Jews. Thou shalt lend unto many nations, banking, thou shalt not borrow. So God has established that Jew for all the world. You go ahead and lend them money. But you're not going to be borrowing from them. And the Lord shall make thee the head, important, a top. You find that head, Daniel 2, 32, 38, the head of gold, Nebuchadnezzar, the leader. Why was Nebuchadnezzar the head, the leader of that statue? Wasn't Israel supposed to be the head? But Israel were the captives. They were the captivity because they sinned and went against what God has told them to do. And the fact is that Nebuchadnezzar has that dream. And Daniel says the head is you. Would go to the Jewish people, you are not doing right at that moment. 
And when a Jewish man opens to Daniel and he reads Daniel chapter 2, that that head of gold is you, Nebuchadnezzar, to the Jewish people in the synagogues and be, we have sinned. That is our position, not the Gentile. And we are yet in the time of the Gentiles because the Jews have sinned. And not the tail. That image didn't have a tail. And thou shalt be above only. Important. Thou shalt not be beneath the basement. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, and deserve to do them. Okay, whatever those commandments say, you do them as a nation. You'll be above all nations. Have they obeyed the commandments? No, because they're not above all nations. They will be. When Jesus Christ is settled upon the throne of David, they will be. But they're not now. Do you realize if they knew what the Bible said, the Old Testament, if they acknowledged what Moses wrote and the prophets, they would have said all along, that man over there, you see that man over there? That's our Messiah. He is doing everything that the prophet said he would do. He has done everything that Moses wrote about him. And when it would come to the time for him to go to Calvary, if the nation done right, they would have gone up to Jesus, surrounded him, and be like, what do you guys want? We understand you're the Messiah. If they had done right, if they had obeyed God. Now you've got to die. You've got to die in our hands. <laughs> Messiah, what must we do to do to you that we may be still right in the eyes of God? They never done that. It was for envy they turned Jesus over to Pilate to have him crucified because crucifixion was one of the prophecies set forth for Jesus because he couldn't be stoned because not of a bone of him should be broken. And some of the people of that Sanhedrin as uh, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimea, they knew who Jesus was and they believed on him. Had they obeyed God, and they won't, rest assured by the time we get to Jeremiah, they blow it. They're having a Catholic mass with the Queen of Heaven and her little cookies. They are making Christmas trees with ornaments. And you got it wrong because we read today as a family in Judges, you're supposed to put your ornaments on the camels, not the tree. Don't you know your Bible, Christian? Get a camel, put the ornaments on him. It's in the Bible. Judges, find it yourself. I advise you not to. So, uh, probably someone's going to go out there and do it now. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day. Asherah, Baal, Balaam, the hosts of heaven, the high places, uh, um, grove of trees. By the time we get to Jeremiah, they have left. Listen, they've already had the sacred cow dancing in front of it, having a Baptist fellowship in front of it, and singing and partying to the right hand or to the left. To go after other gods, and they will, to serve them. That's it, the good ones. 14 verses. That's it. Now we're going to move from 15 to 68 on all of you going to do, which is bad. And 15 to 68 is the condition of Israel in the time of Jeremiah, the spiritual condition and the physical condition of when Jesus came, and what the Jews are today. But that's a that's a massive but right there. You wish that Deuteronomy twenty eight would have ended at fourteen. But Jerusalem being sacked by the Babylonians. Jerusalem being destroyed by Titus, 70 AD. But, 
it shall come to pass. That's how this chapter started. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes. So when we go over here, when we start it off, it said in verse 1, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to serve and to do all his commandments. Now we start off, if you don't do it, that all these curses, was it 27, enough of them, 12? Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall be, a curse shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. We read that in verse 3. Okay. Cursed shall be thy basket in thy store. We read that in verse 5. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. And the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. We read that in verse 4. Cursed shall be thou when thou comest in. And cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. We read that in verse number 6. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing. Next say, uh oh, we got something new now. We got something new that we didn't read was a blessing. Let's see when you don't adhere to the word of God. All right? Cursing. That's not swearing. That's God pronouncing curses upon him as he did upon Adam and Eve and the serpent. Vexation. Rebuke. You guys, there may be Jews today get rebuked by public ministry when they hear Christ suffered and died for them. 2018. And all that thou settest thy hand unto, unto for to do, for two to do, until thou be destroyed. And we read about that. And unto thou perish quickly. We didn't read anything about perishing. God's not willing that they perish. God's not willing they die in their sins. But with your sins and disobeying the word of God comes that word perish. And we see a scripture today in the New Testament. Well, actually the Gospels. Because Christ has not been dead he has not been buried he has not rose from the grave so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in should not perish the nation of Israel when Jesus came is perishing because they are not obeying God and Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law they can't do that he may rescue them Because the wilderness, wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. So you see what sin brings to you. It brings perishing. It brings death. It brings wickedness. It brings you not in fellowship with God. It's a serious thing to be sinning against God. It is serious. And God is warning the Israelites through Moses, written down in black and white that we see today still. What causes you to perish? Your wickedness. How do you not perish? You do what God tells you to do. Today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt live. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. You left God. The Lord shall make the, the pestilence, that's a disease, cleave unto thee. Until he, God, has consumed thee from off the land. The book, the end of Jeremiah, Lamentations, Daniel, Ezekiel. Whether thou goest to possess it. You, you, you're going in that land, but they're coming out. And the Lord shall smite thee with consumption. And that's a waste. Consuming. This distraction. Destruction. And with a fever. That's not good. You ever have a fever? You can't do much with a fever. With inflammation. And your ibuprofen is not going to help it. 
not when God gives it to you. And with extreme burning, rashes, heat rashes, boils, and with the sword, death. Sword, that's a military weapon. There are people almost daily now dying at the hands of a gun in masses in America. Because America is not doing what God wants her to do. With blasting, that's the first time that word shows up. You'll find that in Amos 4, 9, that blasting. And with mildew. Isn't there a problem with mildew and mold? Mildew and mold is one of the things that when you don't do what God told you to do. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Nebuchadnezzar, Titus, O history. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. No rain at all. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron, no plants, no crops. Leviticus 26, 19 on that one. There will be no rain and no ground for crops. That's a sign of disobeying God. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust, dust storm. America had a dust storm. When we told God, we don't want you no more, but we rather have the liquor. It's called the Great American Dust Bowl. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. No rain, no nothing. No crops, no eating. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Now you can fear your enemies. Babylon, Titus, Romans, Palestine, PLO, Jordan. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways. Complete opposite of verse 7. Before them. And shall be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth and the Jews are everywhere over the world. And they have been. That's a prophecy fulfilled today. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all falls. You're going to die without a burial. Of the air and unto the beasts of the earth you're going to be put into the stomachs of animals and you're going to be pooped out that's what happens to Jezebel <clears throat> she becomes dog poop and for a Jew in his customs that is the worst way to, to die after you died there are some cultures if you don't have a proper funeral that's just as worth it. You can die the, mo the most immoral activity you can ever die in. No man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch. That's the first time that shows up. Of Egypt. An Egyptian disease. With the hemorrhoids. That's a hemorrhoid. Imagine hemorrhoids being in the Bible. There it is. Hemorrhoids. Those are the things that the Palestinians made little gold things of to, after God cursed them for carrying the Ark of the Covenant and having it. They got hemorrhoids. They got hemorrhoids. That's the first time. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I haven't got up to E on that one. Let's do up to D. I wish I'd done these first times. Sometimes I want to go back over to Genesis again because this word story is so great. All right? Hemorrhoids with a scab. Now watch out for that scab, Leviticus 13, 14. It may turn into leprosy, but there's a scab. You know what? You know what this order today would make a scab still be a scab with long time healing would be diabetes. Now here's one I don't like. And with the itch. I don't know why God has not given us fingers long enough to get that itch in your back <laughs> that you get. You got to use a back scratch. But can you imagine having a disorder by God because you have not listened to God that you are given an itch by God and God said, hey, I ain't going to relieve that itch. That's got to be impossible. 
No ointment, no other is going to get that itch to go away if God is angry with you. If God would ever touch you with, an, with a disorder in your life for rebelling against him, that, that, the itch. Never mind the hemorrhoids. Never mind not being able to eat. For disobeying God. Whereof thou camest, ah, whereof thou canst not be healed. Go to the doctor you want. Go to all the doctors you want. Waste all your money on that. You're not going to be healed from that. You're not going to be relieved from that itch. I'm going to pick on itch because I don't like itch. You got hemorrhoids? I'm sorry you got, but you replaced hemorrhoids with my with the itch. And then think about that. Rebelling against God. No relief at all. And the Lord shall smite thee with madness, craziness, looniness, with blindness. You ever notice when Jesus came up, there were a lot of blind people? What he he gave sight to the blind. What was the blind people testifying to Jesus and the people around Jesus? We are not living according to Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. And they didn't recognize it. Here comes your Messiah healing people in that one point to say, Hey, Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 on said, If we don't do good, if we don't obey God, we're going to be in this condition. And they never recognized that. Blindness and astonishment. That's the first time that word shows up. Astonishment of heart. <gasps> Not head. Your heart is affected. Thou shalt grope at noonday as a blind globe in darkness, feeling yourself around. You have no light. You have no guidance. And Jesus came to be light in the world. There you match that. When Jesus is the light. And Jesus opened the eyes of the blind. There it is. Jesus is the answer. Thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. How's that? How about going through all your difficulties, trials, and medical conditions? You got no rain, you got no crops, and everybody is oppressing you, and they're stealing from you. And no one's going to help you. Thou shalt be true of a wife, and a man shall lie with her. These were the military commands we saw before. You are restricted from military business and, and any business if you just married a wife for one year. Now, we're going to go to war. Anybody just be off a wife? All right, you can go home and be with your wife. Cheer up. Now, you're not doing right. Now shall be off a wife and another man shall lie with her. Now shall build a house. That's what we read a couple weeks ago. And thou shall not dwell therein. Thou shall plant a vineyard. Look at the matching. Go back. Let's go back to 20 verse 5 and see this. 20 verse 5. The officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that has built a new house? And has not dedicated it. Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in battle, and another man dedicate it. Well, here over here it says, Hey, you're going to build a house, someone else is going to do it. The military is going to come in and occupy your house. What man has there had planted a vineyard? What was over here? Vineyard, verse 30. Vineyard, vineyard. And has not eaten of it. Let him also go and return to his house. Lest he die in battle, and another man eat it. And what man is there that has betrothed a wife and has not taken her? Let him go and return to his house. Lest he die in battle, and another man take her. Scripture with scripture. When you run over to Deuteronomy, God says, I'll send an army in there, and they'll take that wife, they'll take that house, and they'll take that vineyard. Because you have not listened to me. And we go even further than 20 verses 5, 6, and 7. 31. Thy ox shall be slain before thy eyes. And thou shalt not eat thereof. No beef. Now this almost pictures Job. 
Job chapter one, he lost well, watch, and thou shalt eat, thou shalt not eat thereof. Thy ass shall be violently taken away before thy face. And thou and it shall not be restored to thee. The sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Let's go to Job chapter one. Job pictures a Jew in the tribulation period. And verse 14, Job 1 14. And there came a messenger of Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses being beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they had slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only I am escaping. In verse number 16, the sheep are gone. Number seven, verse 17, the servants and the camels are gone. Verse 18, the sons and the daughters are gone. You're looking for not only things that happened during Jeremiah's time and Lamentations and Ezekiel and Daniel. Not only are you looking at a time in 70 AD, 71 AD, 72 AD, you're looking also at the time of chapter 28 when the Antichrist is going to come in power. And he's going to go in there and confiscate everything that's Jewish. Verse 32, like into Job, thy sons and thy daughters, now they're killed, shall be given unto another people. And that I shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. That is World War II. That is the Jews watching their children being loaded up by the Nazis. It's also um, 32. It's also Daniel 1 3. Daniel 1 3? Yeah. It's all over there for the dis rebellion, the re rebellion against God. It's in our history books, but you can't find them no more in the history books, can you, anymore? Almost like maybe Satan's race in our history, not for Americans' sake, but maybe for the Jewish sake that they won't see where they are and won't be able to identify Hitler and, now, and the Antichrist as Satan, as Nebuchadnezzar and all them. Maybe. The only way they're going to have to find what's going on is through the Bible. Which will be definitely banned. You think the Bible is going to be banned during the Antichrist? I guarantee it. There was a period in time in history the Catholic Church banned the Bible. The, ba the Bible was chained to pulpits. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed Always. Now, would you think to be smart and do what God tells you to do? So that thou shalt be mad. That's crazy mad. For the sight of thy eyes which thou shalt see. We're not done. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees. So today you get knee transplants, aren't don't you not? In the legs. Uh, clots, diabetes, with a botch, an ulcer, sore, a sore, sore ulcer. What's those? What's those four words that cannot be healed? Do you realize if we are reading future, uh, it just happened during Babylon, this happened during Titus, I mean Titus 70 AD, and if we are yet reading future past the church age, and we see we see commercials that, you know, people are going to live to be 100 and cancer is going to be, you know, discovered that afternoon, you're going to walk away home cancer free and all that, it says here that, okay, your ulcer, your knees and your legs will, will not, cannot, it's unable to be healed. From the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Now who is that? Job said. That's Job. 
That is the tribulation period that we read. Job 42 chapters. 42 months. There it is. This is not only Daniel. This is not only Titus. This is also tribulation passage. In the tribulation period, if you are a Jew, I'm going to say this a Jew. I don't know about the rest of the world unless you receive the mark. There is no healing for you. And Jesus says one of the things, and I was sick and you visited me. Isn't that interesting? The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, into a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, Babylon. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone, which violates the law. Imagine God doing that. You want to worship other gods? You want to worship idols and images? I'll send you to a nation that's got them. And they're going to make you sick. <clears throat> and that shall become an astonishment, a proverb, a byword. There's the first time that word shows up, byword. You're going to be a joke. You're going to be a taunt. You're going to be a tease. Among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. Hi, ah, you got that great God. Ah, that great city, Jerusalem. What is it now? Ah. Hey, what, what, what do you do when you got two Jews and a penny? You get a copper wire. Ah, 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 ah. That's all in the Bible. Jewish jokes are in the Bible. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field. That, that sounds good. And shall gather but little in. For the locusts shall consume it. Well, we're running into the things of the Egyptians in the book of Exodus. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall reap. That verse right there, verse 38, is a verse that violates nature. Because if a man goes in with seed, he's to get more than what he planted in seed. And you'll find the locusts and all that in Joel chapter 1. Thou shalt plant a vineyards, plural, and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Joel chapter 1. There's a palmer worm, there's a, and there's a whole bunch of animals mentioned there. Go ahead, work hard, pay hard, do everything hard for that vineyard. If I can send Jonah a gourd, I'll send some worms. Because they disobey God. We're still on. We're still reading. Aren't we having fun? Thou shalt have oil trees, olive trees, throughout all thy coast. Look, they're all through the coast. But thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil. For thy oil, for thy olive shall cast his fruit. They're going to fall on the ground. Before it's ready to pick them. And they're going to rot. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. Well, I bless you with sons. You get sons and daughters. But thou shalt not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity. And that's that verse in Daniel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo were one of the children of the king. And they are now in the Babylon. Hmm? One, three. one three. All thy trees... And fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. The locusts are very hungry, aren't they? The stranger, that's a gentle that is within thee, shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. That's not how it's supposed to be for God. The Jews were supposed to be. Do you realize God loves the Jews? But today he loves that gentile that believes on Jesus Christ more than the Jews. If a Gentile takes the gospel to a Jew, according to Romans chapter 10, God says, I'd love the feet of that Jew. I mean, that Gentile that carries the gospel of peace. And if he carries it to the people that are my people, man, I love that more. And the man that's carrying the gospel to the Jewish man, he's above all because he believes on Jesus Christ as a savior. That Jewish person, if he doesn't believe on Jesus, well, he's going to hell. Get the farm above. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee. Well, that's not what we read. And thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be thy head. 
and thou shalt be the tail. Again, that's Daniel 32, Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel said, the head is you. And there is no tail on that image. More of all these curses shall come upon thee. Hasn't it been enough since verse 15? All of them. And shall pursue thee. And overtake thee. I thought the blessings we read about. Not here. Not when you disobey God. Till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To keep his commandments and his statutes that he commanded thee. Do what God says. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. Jews require a sign. For a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God. With joyfulness. Okay, I'll bring my animal. Yeah, I gotta do it. And with gladness of heart, okay, gotta go to Jerusalem, get pretty close. Uh, for the abundance, that's the first time that shows up, of all things. You're supposed to be happy serving the Lord. You're supposed to be joyful serving the Lord. The Bible says in Corinthians, when you give to the Lord, give a cheerful heart, not, not because you have to, but because you want to. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. You're not going to do much in hunger. And in thirst. You can't do much when you're thirsty. And in nakedness. Ooh, the cruelty. And in the want of all things. There's covetousness. Covetousness is one of the big ten. And I'll send you away coveting things. Like food, water, and clothes. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Let's go to Jeremiah 28, 14. And this is a sign to the Jews. Jeremiah 28, 14. God had Jeremiah do some weird things for to be a sign. Uh, Jeremiah 28 14 and read this whole chapter is very interesting because it started off with a wood one and the Bible says a neck of uh, a yoke of iron so this idiot false prophet had to make the Bible come true verse 15 then said the prophet Jeremiah to Hananiah whatever his name is the prophet here now Hananiah the Lord has not sent thee, but thou makest his people to trust in a lie. No, wait a minute. Verse 13. Excuse me. Verse 13. Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood. That's not scripture. But thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. There's a the scripture. For thus saith the Lord, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field. Does that sound familiar? They shall kill the, your oxen, and there it is. There is a fulfillment part of in Deuteronomy 28, right there. This false prophet had to make the prophecy happen, so he breaks these wooden yokes off Jeremiah that he's walking around with, and he's, Jeremiah is walking away. Oh, that idiot. And God says, hey, I got a message for you. What? Instead of those wooden ones, I'm going to put an iron on it. The yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation. Do you know what the symbol of the Nazi party was? Study the eagle. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to, uh, show favor to the young. The Nazis killed all ages, all sexes. And they flew under the eagle. 
man, we've gone for Jeremiah and Babylon. We've gone right to World War II. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land unto thou be destroyed. That's what they attempted to do. They were out to destroy the Jews, which also shall not leave thee neither either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he had destroyed thee. And under the Antichrist, you've got to receive that mark to gain any of that. And the Jews cannot receive that mark. He shall besiege thee all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trustest. You trust in the walls. Sound like America? We gotta build walls to, to protect us. Oh, look how great these walls are. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed them. Look how great we are. Jesus, look how great this temple is. Isn't it just fascinating? Titus 70 AD. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land. Titus. He built a moat around the city. Which the Lord thy God has given thee. There's much history in this chapter. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body. That's lamentations. You're going to boil your son and your daughter. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters. Which... <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord thy God has given thee in the siege, in the straightness wherein, where, you know, straightness, there's only one way, death. Wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee, so that the man that is tender, he's, 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 he's got no strength. He's just your common Joe. Among you, very delicate. That's the first time that word shows up. It's talking about a man. His eye shall be evil towards his brother, toward his wife, of his bosom. He's not going to think well of his family. And then we're going to have to stop it right here and save. I'll be, I'll be running, I think, an hour it stops. So hold on, I'll be right back.